hello again. So now that I've gone over passive heating and cooling, I want to get into some appropriate technology examples with regards to cooking and food storage. And getting back to that statistic of US energy household consumption, lighting, appliances and refrigeration account for 35% of home energy use. So any way that we can cut down on that energy use with regards to the appliances in the kitchen or refrigeration uh, will go a long way in terms of cutting our energy consumption. So the first example that I want to go over is one of the simplest, quickest and easiest ways to cut down your energy use uh, with regards to uh, cooking and it's called a blanket box or a hay box and what you do is that you take a cooler or a box but a cooler is something that you likely have in your home right already and this is a cooler that we use for camping or for road trips um, and then you take a blanket uh, preferably it's a wool blanket or if you have any extra wool you can use that too but you take a blanket um, this one I think is just cotton, uh, but it seems to do the trick just fine. And then you stick it into the cooler, like this. Then what you want to do is take whatever you're cooking. Uh, so, you know, this, this method you, is best used for cooking dried beans or rice or something like that, right? So th there are chickpeas in here. I have soaked them for a couple hours beforehand, right? Again, cutting down on how much energy I need to use to actually cook them. They've absorbed a lot of the moisture. I've soaked them for a couple hours, and then I brought them to a boil. And that took about 10 minutes. So the oven was on for 10 minutes. Then I shut it off, right? And then you want to take this, and you want to stick it into your blanket box like that. And then you want to envelop and insulate the whole thing with the existing blanket. And then I sometimes put you know, oven mitts or an extra little bit of insulation on top. Put the top on. And then I usually put something heavy on top of that. And then I move this cooler uh, to one of the warmest places in the house, say next to a heater or something. And I'll leave this for a couple hours. Um, so we'll come back in a couple hours and uh, make sure that everything is, is cooked. But in this way, rather than having to simmer those chickpeas for two to three hours on the oven, which is how long it would take, right? I'm taking advantage of the insulation of the cooler, of the blanket, um, for those, those chickpeas to cook on their own with the existing heat um, that they have. Uh, sometimes I recommend uh, a stainless steel uh, pot with a very well-fitting lid, which works a little bit better, but I don't have one of those. Um, and the glass one seems to work just fine, although I think a more fitted top uh, would be a, a little bit more effective. So that's a blank box. It's probably something that most any of us uh, who live in the developed world uh, can do fairly easily with things that you already have in your house. So highly recommend it for cooking things uh, that normally take a lot of time, especially if you don't have a pressure cooker. Uh, so beans, rice, you could even do your pasta in here as well. So the chickpeas have been cooking in here for about an hour and 45 minutes. I want to check now to see if they're fully cooked. Uh, so I'm just going to take everything off here and cover them. And it's still super, super warm in this blanket box. And then I'm going to grab a few chickpeas and yes, indeed, uh, the chickpeas are fully cooked. Uh, so we went from a dry chickpea, uh, put in 10 minutes of energy use, and were able to fully cook these chickpeas. Again, cutting down significantly on energy use by doing something super simple with things that you have likely in your home already. Uh, so really great appropriate technology. And this is your hands-on activity for this module. Um, so I hope uh, that you're able to do it and let me know how it goes. Another appropriate technology with regards to cooking is of course the solar oven. Now I mentioned that in one of the previous videos. Again, just a word of caution in terms of 
choosing the solar oven that's appropriate to a site where you do have a lot of sun and where you spend a lot of time outside, uh, where the an outdoor kitchen makes sense uh, and you have reasonable uh, temperatures. So there's a ton of information out there online in terms of how to build solar ovens and I've included some of that information in the further reading list. So definitely check that out. So another example of an appropriate technology with regards to cooking is the cob oven. And like I mentioned before, we built one on our site and I, uh, there's a link below this video to a photo album that takes you through that process, the, the steps that we went through uh, to build the cob oven if you're interested. But basically cob oven again uses renewable resources. You're firing it with wood uh, and you get it to a super high temperature and at those high temperatures you're baking things like pizza. Uh, once it lowers a little bit, maybe you're putting in bread or you're putting in uh, an apple crisp. And then once the temperature lowers even more, you might put in some yogurt. Uh, and then finally, when it it's lowers even more, you're drying herbs in there, for example. So again, multiple uses uh, for that one firing of the cob oven uh, where you can cook uh, a lot of different things. Um, so that's a cob oven. Another appropriate technology is the rocket stove. And I'm not gonna go into detail about the rocket stove stove here or you may have heard of rocket mass heaters. There is a ton of information out there on the internet and I've included some of that information uh, in the further reading. So now let's talk a little bit about appropriate technologies with regards to food storage. So the first thing that you want to do again is do an analysis and assessment of your home in terms of existing places that you might have that make sense for food storage. So for us, for example, we have this great mud room that's just off to the left here of our kitchen and it's not as well insulated as the rest of the house. So it means it's much cooler in there. Uh, and I've used that area to store a lot of my winter crops, my winter storage crops like winter squash, onions, potatoes, carrots, all of that stuff seems to store fairly easily in the mud room uh, where it is cooler. I'll also put my canned goods and dehydrated goods in there. So it's a cool place already uh, and, and it's it came with the house, so that's great. Uh, in addition to that, we do put our chest freezer out in the mudroom, so it's already cooler, uh, so the freezer doesn't have to do as much um, of a job in terms of keeping cool. It's already cooler in the mudroom, uh, and we use that chest freezer uh, to, f to keep all of our wild game. So it's a big hunting culture here in Montana. Um, so we have deer and elk meat um, that's stored in that freezer. So again, there might be existing areas in your house where you could already, uh, that would already be amenable to food storage. Uh, now, another option, of course, or one of the most ideal options in terms of food storage is the root cellar. Uh, so if you have an existing root cellar, that's fantastic. If you don't uh, and you really do anticipate wanting to extend your yield uh, and become as self-reliant as possible, it is an element that would be great for a site if it makes sense uh, for that site. And the great thing about root cellars is that you don't have to put that initial energy into to food preservation, right? So you're not putting that energy into canning, you're not putting that energy into dehydrating, you're just harvesting that yield and then being able to extend that yield in time by just simply storing it in a root cellar. Um, so that is a great option if it makes sense uh, for your site. And then another thing to consider, of course, is a solar dehydrator. Uh, that, again, will go a long way in terms of preserving, allowing you to preserve your food while at the same time not taking a lot of energy to do so uh, or just using the energy of the sun. Uh, so we don't yet have a solar dehydrator, but I have included in the further reading list uh, a link to some specs on a solar dehydrator uh, that works fantastically. Um, so I highly recommend if you want to check that out. 
So again, those are a lot of examples. I've given you a lot of examples of appropriate technology with regards to cooking and food storage. There are many, many more. Uh, if you have a real interest in appropriate technology, I highly recommend doing a bunch of research online. There's so much information out there and really great um, innovative ideas in terms of what you can do.